Hi friends, so I have been planning to do this video for quite a long time now. In this video, we will be looking into the VMware Enterprise features like vMotion, SVMotion. So, let's get started. The very first thing that I want to look into is the networking part. So, we'll go to our virtual network editor. And I have decided that these are the subnets that I'm going to use for storage, vMotion, fault tolerance, and management. So, let's change this. This is going to be our network 5. VMAT 1, we will use it for st storage. So we can make this 2. Let's make this 3. And this one will keep it as 4. And 5 is already over there. The VM at 8. Alright. So we'll click on apply. And as soon as we do that, you know, virtual adapters will be installed automatically over here. You can see, see this slowly, slowly, the adapters are coming up. Alright, so this is done, the networking part. The next thing that we'll do is now we'll install to ESXi host server. So I have already downloaded ESXi 5 on VMware website. So, oh, one, one more thing that I want to show you. Uh, if I can go to preferences and I can, you know, give a path if I want to, you know, store, um, my virtual machine, VMDK, VMX, all the files at some particular location. I can do that. So let's do that. And now we'll install ESXi 5. I will call this ESXi host 1. We'll just give it 10 gigs. That's good enough. Of the installation and we can remove floppy, we can use USB controller, it will utilize unnecessary resources. And right now, what we will do, we will add all the mix that we created in our networking part. Then we can say finish and the will power on. And we can start the installation. We can meanwhile start uh, another instance for host 2. Same thing. Alright, so now we have two instances of DSX installing. Alright, one thing I want to tell you, the good part about working with VMA Workstation is uh, now I'm having different subnets over here, you see, two, three, four, and VMware Workstation itself, it has got uh, an inbuilt uh, router, uh, so I need not to install a virtual router, you know, for routing to happen between these two. 
uh, VMware Workstation has got its inbuilt router, it has got an, its inbuilt DHCP so, uh, service, so I need not to worry about all those things. So this is the good thing, good part about working with VMware Workstation. Uh, earlier what I did, I installed, uh, um, I installed uh, ESXi on bare metal on top of it and uh, then I uh, was working and I was and I found that my NAS, my SAN, which is free NAS, was dropping packets. So somebody told me that work on VMware Workstation and then on top of it uh, make to hosted server. So and I tried uh, like that and it worked well. So now I'm making a video for that. So this is going to be our um, iSCSI storage, our SAN. So the product that I'm using is called FreeNAS. Uh, it is based on FreeBSD. So for installation drive, I will just get four gigs. That's good enough. And for this, we will use uh, our iSCSI storage, which is two, and one I will use also for management. So let's for management one and then for storage how big is this network so, and also do you know what we can increase the RAM I can make it one zero two four And that's it. Everything else is good. So we'll just do finish. We'll say power on. Meanwhile, we can just enter and start the installation. Oh, I have by mistake uh, associated the wrong drive. So let me power this off. Go to Reddit. And the ISO that I will be using will be FreeNAS. All right. Yep. Let's install these. Also, I will start the installation for our uh, vCenter appliance. So I've already downloaded the OVF file, OVF file from internet. I don't want a such a lengthy name. I just make it this much. You can also remove V in there. Just make it center server appliance that's good enough so f11 to install same thing over here f11 install free nas installed installation of free nas is very fast so we can just reboot this system Alright, so meanwhile this is happening, I can just pause the video. So now the installation for both the ESXi host is complete and FreeNAS and even the vCenter appliance has imported. So I just rebooted the host uh, once. Now the server is up. So the very first time when, I, when you 
uh, log into the server. I want to change the IP. Right now, it's getting an IP from DHCP. All right, so over here, one thing you have to make sure is the network adapter that you are using, going to use for management. Uh, over here, that which is showing as VMNIC1. It, it has to be the same uh, NIC that we assigned over here as VMNet8. So I just made sure by checking the MAC address, it ends with 9D. So this is the 9D that we'll be using for the management. If you happen to go to look our this thing for management, we are using the uh, VMNet8, the native one. So now I'm going to give this a static IP. So I will go to IP configuration and I will give a static IP of 5.3 maybe. Uh, and I don't want IPv6. I will disable that. It says restart required. So it will restart the machine once I do say yes. Same thing we will do for ESXi host, ESXi 1. IP configuration, I will make this uh, 5.4. Actually, I was trying to make ESXi host 1 as 5.3 and ESXi host 2 as 5.4, but that's fine. It doesn't matter now. And we can disable IPv6. All right, so meanwhile, this is going on. Now we can work on our free NAS. Um, so for, I'll go to 5.30, 130. There's our free NAS. All right, one thing that I need to do is right now I've only added one uh, disk, one installation disk. Uh, for storage, I need to add uh, two more disks. So let's do that and that will require again a reboot. So let us first of all shut this host. So I have shut this down and now we can go to edit virtual machine settings and we can add hard disk, uh, create a new disk, and we'll give it say 50 gigs. Single file. All right. One more. All right. So now we can power this on back. Meanwhile, we can go to our V Center appliance. Now I don't need eight gigs for this. Um, you know, by default. Uh, when you import these center appliance and on on a standard in a standard environment you would need at least uh, eight gigs but for me I guess uh, four gigs would be good enough so you can make this four zero nine six and the network adapter let's make this VMN eight uh, we can add later on uh, Nick if you want over here. Meanwhile, I can also upgrade this virtual machine. So let's upgrade this to workstation 9. Auto this machine. I don't want to create a clone. So it's done. Uh, meanwhile, the whole server are up. Okay, the NAS is also up, so 5.130, again we go over there, so we go to storage, we'll create volumes, this I will say volume 1, uh, UFS or ZFS, uh, for ZFS you need to have more than 4 gigs of RAM, then it's, then it's a better performance, so another volume 2, Alright, 
so over here we will add initiator we'll say all I'm not going to do any kind of uh, authentication like jab for between initiator and target uh, where I'm saying adding portal saying all go to target add a target let's say dar one so this is the portal initiator that we just created over here right now Make sure that's read right. Now we go to extent and we'll add extent to these volumes and we'll name this as extent one. And we'll make this 50 gigs. Another extent we make over here. Same again, 50 gigs. And now we will associate these targets. We will add extent to these to the target. So the tower one is our extent one. Tower two is going to be our extent. And then we go to services and then we're going to turn on our ISKZ service. So now we next go to our host center. So I will just connect my host center from the Square client, which is uh, 5.3. Oh my, caps is on. I'll just log in the very first time it will ask you if you rely on this so I'll just say ignore yes I and I don't want this pop up again all right so I am thinking of doing a multi pathing so I will add one more nick um, to these two and that will require again a reboot so Go to settings. So, by multipathing, I mean for storage. So, we have one um, network for storage right now, uh, which is on VMNet 1. I'm going to add one more to VMNet 1. Same thing I'm going to do over here. All right, so after installing those two network cards, the both the host server have rebooted them once. So now we can log in to our server, our ESXi host server. And the very first thing that I want to do is the networking part again. So VM Nick one. This VM Nick one is going to be our storage. So I will say I can see. and we'll say obtain IP automatically. And we have VMNet2, which is going to be our for vMotion. 
So I'll just check this and I'll name this as the motion. And the next one, this is going to be for fault tolerance. So I'll just name this as T. is five uh, four and another one this is going to be again our I scale Z our size gets it two all right so the same thing I'm going to do on my host too so I will pause the video Alright, so I have done exactly the same setting on my uh, ESXi host too. Now the next thing that we will look into is our vCenter clients. So let's log into this 5.131.5.4.8.0 and we'll just say permanent restore and we'll log in with default using a password which is root and password is VMware. So let's set the EULA. And I will just configure this with the default settings which is which will have embedded uh, uh, everything with the embedded database, the SSO and everything. So I can just do this. You can, you can check over here. Embedded database, embedded SSO, and database, everything. I'm just click, uh, click on start. I don't have an AD yet right now, uh, else I would have configured that. All right. Meanwhile, this is happening. We can do one thing. Now, since we have configured our free NAS and we have done our networking part over here, we need to go to storage adapter, and then we need to add ISKC software over here. And we would have to do the same thing on our 5.3. Okay, over here, so we can see it has popped up. So we'll go to properties. And we'll add both our ISKZ switches, virtual switch over here. And over here, we need to give the IP of our free NAS server, the ISKZ storage server. So the free NAS server, for this, I'm going to use 2.128. Let's say OK. And they should automatically discover both the targets. So we see TAR1 and TAR2 are here now. Let's just say yes to a rescan. And all the devices should come over here. Both the devices are here. And we have uh, four paths. So what I will do, I will make it for multipathing. We have to make sure that we do it round robin. Then only it will become full, fully multipathing. Same thing over here. All right, and we'll do the same stuff on the other host.
Okay. Alright, so this is done. Now let's go back over here. Okay, it's still okay, it's done now. So now we can log in to our V Center. I'm just I would just want to make sure it shows embedded over here properly. Alright, seems like everything is good. I can just close this and I can start over here. File one thirty one root VMware. Alright, so the very first thing I do, I'll just rename this to say lab and I will create a new data center and I'll say that lab data center and then I will add host. Okay, in your username and password. Similarly, we'll add the other host. So it says right now 80%. It will take some time. 5.3 is done. Now what I will do, I will create a cluster and we'll name this as lab cluster. I will turn the HA on and we can also turn DRS. We'll keep this fully automated. I uh, don't want to keep it manual, otherwise you have to take care of DRS thing your own. Uh, so we'll keep this fully automated and not make it very conservative or very aggressive. DPM we don't need right now. I will talk. I can talk about all these things in more detail in uh, other video. All right, this is an important thing for HA. HA, as you know that. You know, it means that if any of the hosts fails, then all the virtual machine automatically is able to go to other host. So here it's asking me like, okay, like if say, let's suppose, how many hosts do you think uh, in a cluster would fail at, at one time? So usually you keep it one. It's, if it's a very big data center, then maybe you might keep it two or three. If it's very big, uh, that means that you are, uh, thinking as if two of your hosts or three of your hosts will simultaneously go down, so um, which is quite a rare possibility. It's uh, recommended to keep this always one. Or if you want a better, uh, you know, option, then this is a good option. And this you can do it percentage wise. So 25% over here it means like uh, if you have four, say, hosts and uh, one host will go down, uh, that's what it means. Uh, that's 25%. Uh, I'll just keep it right now, one host. I don't, I have only two hosts, so I mean, I can definitely, I cannot have more than one host going down at a time. So, we'll keep it one. I'll 
this will keep the default. I think on the EDC and uh, K default settings. Fine. Now what I can do, I can move these holes to the cluster. So now what will happen? Um, now this host belongs to this cluster and all the resources that is there, now it belongs to this cluster, lab cluster. And also I can do this for the other host. All right, so next thing that we do is now we're going to add the storage on both our host server. So if I happen to do in just one over here, should be good. So I will just name this as screen as one. And we'll add the second one as well. Alright, so now we'll go to over here. I just wanted to make sure that yes, for data center hard reading, I'm using both of these. Make sure that for um, data store heartbeat, you're using the storage which is connected to all the host. So that's fine. Now the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to create a virtual machine. So I'm going to use XP. So to install XP, what I will do, I will create, I will go to this data store and I will create a folder for ISOs. And I'll copy this ISO into this data store. So meanwhile, this copy is happening. I will just pause the video. All right, so the copy is complete. So now what we can do, now we can create a virtual machine. So we'll name this XP. Just getting pretty something, maybe uh, 400, 400 MB. Uh, we'll make this VMR3. And make this 12. And over here, we'll choose the ISO. Alright, so the machine is now up. We cannot power this on. Alright, so now we'll install the XP. So I'll just pause the video. Alright, so I have now done the installation of XP and I've also installed VMware tools. So now we can start testing. The very first thing that I want to show you would be uh, maybe vMotion. So we'll change the host. So right now, if you see, it's hosted on 5.4. So now we'll change it to 5.3. So change host, we will do next and we will choose 5.3 and it says over here validation succeeded. If there is any kind of problem then it will tell you 
like uh, if it's not able to do vMotion, uh, any kind of compatibility issue, uh, it will pop up error over here. So we can just do it on high priority right now and finish. And if we happen to look at task, see over this here it says migrate virtual machine, it's migrating and it's done. Um, and uh, it's migrated. Uh, if we go to summary now, and you can see it's now 5.3. So, if there's some kind of, uh, you want to do some kind of maintenance work of one of your host server, then you can move it from one host to another. Now, let us see the storage SV motion, if that works. So, right now, if you see it's now, right now, uh, hosted. Um, it's on FreeNAS 1. Here's the XPC in FreeNAS 1. So we will now migrate it to FreeNAS 2. So migrate, change data store, and we'll do it FreeNAS 2. And all here also it says validation succeeded. So we'll click on next and finish. Now this is going to take some time because over here now everything the VMDK file, the VMX file, all those files are getting migrated. So this takes some time. So where it says 48 percent. So it's gonna take some time. Once this migration is complete, then we will look into high ability and fault tolerance. I think so. I'll just pause this video. There's no point of watching this status increasing slowly. I will just pause and I will come back once it's around me. Alright, so I think that was a bit late. Uh, it migrated successfully. Uh, now let us check. Uh, if I go to storage. For XP, if I go to storage. I browse this. Now I can see everything is over here on FreeNAS2. Now there is no XP folder over here on FreeNAS1. So both our vMotion and SVMotion are working fine. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to test high ability. So right now I say, uh, so I can see that this XP is HA protected and uh, Right now it's hosted on 5.4. So what happens if I buy something happens to 5.4 and it all of a sudden you know it just dies? So let us do that. What I will do, I'll just shut this down. So we we'll shut this down without putting this into maintenance mode. And then we will see with XP what really happens with XP over here. Okay, so now I can see now the server went down and the XP has now got disconnected. So see the console is gone. Uh, right now the HA would be working and right now you know all those uh, what we're doing is stuff and it will take some time for 
XP to come up and when it will come up it would be on um, 5.3 um, I can see a bunch of warning coming over here because I am running low of resources so see now the XP earlier it was saying, saying disconnected now it doesn't say disconnected If I go over here 5.3 and I see virtual machines, I can see XP is over here. Uh, let's go over here and I will just refresh this. I can just do an open console. Yeah, so see my XP is back. And yeah, I can work, I can do whatever I want. So this is HA. This was HA's, but you saw that it takes some time. It takes some time for this to uh, come up. One more. Now what I can do is I now I can start this server back. So we'll go to here and power this on. Uh, meanwhile, this is coming up. I will just pause the video.